Hello, everybody. Welcome along to this special international edition of Woman Up. We're talking to an Irish turf on um, this episode. And before we get going, my name's Leah. I'm joined by Sue. Hello, Hi, Leah. Sue. How are you yeah, not bad. Um, can't complain, but I can, but I, I won't. Getting closer though to getting closer. Thirty-one weeks now. So, as I was just saying to you, it's getting hard to breathe. Mm. Um, but I'll struggle through. Um, so we're joined by our friend Juno. Not her real name because people, as people watching, will realise that you have to be careful sometimes. Um, giving your real name out in this fight, but we're mm. joined by. Juno, who is currently in Ireland. Hi, Juno. Hi, Juno. Hi, Leah. Hi, Suze. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I am really looking forward to chatting to you guys. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Yeah. We miss you. Yeah, we do. And I miss you too. <laughs> yeah. But you've been up to quite a lot, so we need, we've got we've got a lot to talk about. But why don't yes. you why don't you start us off? and tell us how you initially got involved with turfing yeah sure um so i suppose i am a lesbian so i would have back in the day been involved uh, well not involved i would have just um hung out on the dublin gay scene um back in the 90s early 2000s um it was a time when lesbians were women and there was no um, infiltration of men into our spaces. Um, uh, the gays and lesbians just hung out together. And we have to say, I mean, met lots and lots of people. I had a great time. Um, it was a it was a safe space. So fast forward, I'm not going to go into any great detail about that. Um, fast forward to then uh, circuit mid uh, so around say 2015 um, marriage equality was uh, voted in via referendum uh, which was great um, but on the back of that unfortunately they stuck in a gen a, a self ID um, so men can just basically say they're women mm. um, so that was that went so under the ra radar I myself uh, as a lesbian was quite unaware of it till I joined a, uh, a lesbian social group um, in 2017 and there were um, men in the group, um, autogynophiles, there's no other word for it, um, and they um, made it very clear that they were uh, lesbians, uh, call themselves lesbians. Uh, the women seemed to just mostly tolerate it. Um, and I was like, okay, what's going on here? Um, we were told uh, that under current legislation in Ireland that those men had to, uh, they could not, their membership was valid and that we had to accept them as members um, because they were women and they were lesbians. Uh, so two years passed and I was in and out of the group. Uh, I would have, a lot of the events I attended were um, those men were not involved so it became sort of on the periphery to, to, to my mind but then I started I, I I sort of accidentally discovered um uh Posey Parker and Magdalene Burns on YouTube and then a whole new world was opened up to me and quite quickly I understood oh hang on a second now I know what's going on with those men Do you know, um good question um so yes. there Equality was voted on in 2015, and Correct. so self ID did it. Did that come in in 2015 as well, or was it soon after? Yes. Or? Yes. So at yes. the exact same time, was it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So it was included in the legislation. Um, it, it they literally just added it on to the legislation. Um, um, most MPs or what we call TDs would would admit quite openly that they they basically read the the legislation in mm -hmm. full, and it sort of 
past it was classic classic denton's playbook yeah. they just it was not publicized in any shape manner form i just remember reading an article maybe a year later referencing that a self id had now was now part of the our legislation and thinking huh what happened there how does that fit in that was included yeah. so when everyone voted they were voting also for self id no. No, no, no. That's exactly okay. the point. They were voting for marriage equality. There was yeah. no reference to self-ID. N- nobody in this country voted for self-ID. It was not yeah. voted for. Yeah. So yeah. it was just the legislation came in in 2015, so it wasn't sort of tagged on to what you were voting for. No. No. So the question was very much, uh, so it, obviously a referendum, you're given, you know, it's a yes or no answer. So we were asked specifically about marriage equality. There was no reference to any other piece of legislation or proposed legislation. Um, that's very clear. Um, so quite frankly, and I've spoken to many, many people here in Ireland. I mean, we were delighted with that result. We were, we thought it was it was a fantastic day. I'll never forget the day. We all headed into Dublin City Centre and we had a fantastic time celebrating the result. But I can tell you now, if I had known then that that they had tagged the self ID onto that legislation, I would have voted no. There was no way I would have voted for, uh, for that legislation. Well, yeah, so you that's would be how... voting against your own interests. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Mm. Well, correct. well, the ideology is so homophobic. So mm. yes, it's yes. really erasing yes. gays and yes. lesbians. A hundred percent, hundred percent. So we thought they were ring fencing, endorsing gays and lesbians and our, you know, as to, to validate us and our relationships. It was complete opposite. They yeah. were actually voting to erase us. But that's yeah. what we were doing. We were, it was literally tur- uh, turkeys voting for Christmas. And we didn't realise yeah. it. Yeah. And there's been a lot of Australian um, lesbians and gays also that have said the same thing. If they knew what was coming, um, yes. they would have voted no, which is really yes. quite sad given the LGB over decades fought so hard and you finally get yes. there. And then... So, you, so you, you say that you had a bit of time where you kind of felt like you were you had to, what, be kind? And then you you discovered the Posey Parker and the Magdalene Burns videos, and it kind of gives you a way a, a way of understanding how you've been duped mm. by hearing someone Absolutely. else vocalizing Absolutely. what is going on. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Especially Magdalene, because I mean mm. that lady, she was so force of nature, and I I actually watched her videos after she passed, and I remember crying. When I realised she had passed on, I never met the woman. I didn't know her in real time. Um, so she, I mean, myself and my girlfriend were, which I'll talk to you about soon. And um, we were just discussing that at the conference last week where we, we were just saying what a absolutely brilliant voice she would have been in our movement. She was so forceful, so articulate, just got to the point, uh, called out the the BS on the, on this topic. Um, but anyway, that she he absolutely away was in was it? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, so yeah, Leah, absolutely, hundred uh, percent. She uh, and Posey, um, and then of course you've got. I start coming across then later on the the Maya for Stata, starters, uh, the Helen Joyce's Glinner, um. You know, obviously, I discovered them via, um, I think Twitter really mostly. And then once, once it's like anything. I think anybody that I know, when they say they've their peaking moment, it's almost like you can never go back. And that social group, I never looked at the same way. Now, because of COVID, my membership lapsed, um, because I wasn't attending any events. Um, but I'm still on their Facebook group um, and I still keep an eye on what's going on. And I mean, you know, the 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 so the trans identified male that's predominant in that group, you know, is constantly a this is on a lesbian social group. Um mm-hmm. uh, and they don't call it lesbian anymore. It's um it's the LGBTQ plus 
women group mm-hmm. um so the the lesbians were moved obviously and but he's constantly advocating and pushing trans stuff and i'm like you know this is where they just know it's a, in yet another example of where even these men have absolutely no appreciation it's all about them and they um i know some women were thrown out of this group a couple of years ago for being turfs and uh, he's quite openly talked about TERFs. Uh, he was at the Let Women Speak event that we had in Dublin there um, in October. Um, and it's quite ironic that, you know, we were both members of the same social group and he's on one side of the fence at this Let Women Speak and I'm at the other side. So again, this is all part of this, just how insane this whole thing has become, you know? Yeah, mm. it's it's just become out of control. Yes. It is. And I mean, to be honest with you, social media for me, I've always only used it as a a networking tool. Um, Yes, I will scroll through all the stuff that all the nonsensical stuff. I mean, you almost sometimes think you're in a parallel universe with some of the stuff that you see. But uh, for me, um, social media is um, a tool to network and meet people. So I always use it as a positive mm-hmm. tool rather than get into these. Uh, I avoid these Twitter spats that you mm-hmm. see from time to time. Um, and I'm not going to reference a, a recent Twitter spat because I don't want to get involved in it. But it's negative. It, um, it, it We need to be positive. We need mm-hmm. to all be positive and we need... We have the same common goal here um, to protect women and kids um, as safe spaces. Um, and no matter how, you know, whether lesbians, straight, gay, whatever, you want to call yourself. Um, and that's the common goal. So, yeah, I, I think, to be honest with you, the, the main, my turfing going forward is going to be, I'm going to be looking at, you know, creating um, and working with other, particularly lesbians, to creating safe spaces for lesbians and be a positive influence rather than constantly heart bark. We all know, we all know what has happened. We all know these men have invaded our spaces. So what are we going to do about it? So we have to do something about it. So what's the state of things in the UK then? Can you have lesbian only gatherings legally? Yes. I can't believe I'm saying that sentence. I know, I know, Leah. It's um, it's mad, but um, yes, that's a really good question. So, um, I attended the um with my girlfriend, which again I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Um, last Friday, um, it was great. It was the 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 conference, uh, the LGBA um conference in London. Uh, I've been there two years ago, and um, this time was great because I knew lots of people there. And met two girls from Not All Gays, which is a, an Irish gay and lesbian group that's obviously hugely gender critical. Uh, and they've uh, become quite um, vocal and have actually done some really good actions, which I might reference uh, quickly. Um, um, but anyway, moving along to the the quest- to answer your question. Um, so when we were at the conference, um, we had been aware of this event anyway. There was a female-only uh, lesbian um, get-together, disco, dance, whatever you like to call it, um, somewhere in London. Um, I'm not too sure where, what part of London, but it was in a London suburb. Um, so we were able to, and the great thing is the organiser, I met the organiser, um, her name's uh, Kelly. And um, she um, had tons and tons of flyers and she was distributing them at the, the conference. Um, so we said to her, absolutely, we'll go. Um, so any lesbians that were there basically went. Um, um, so we jumped in an Uber um, got to the venue and it was like going back in. The, I've referenced the 1990s. Um, it was like going back to oh. lesbian only spaces that we had in the 1990s it was downstairs in a restaurant um um quite you know dark and sort of a bit bit little bit grungy but <laughs> cool i suppose and uh, there was then an upstairs area where which was open um um to the air and of course in typical uk weather it was raining but um so we <laughs> but they had umbrellas and they had a big fire fire pit uh, which was 
it initially kept us warm, but that went out because of the rain, I think, put it out. Um, so it was, I'm, I'm referencing all of the, the sort of the, the sort of the uniqueness of just, uh, it was almost like, oh my God, this is so literally underground. Um, and there was, I don't know, how many, how many uh, lesbians do you think was there, Kayleigh? I'd say there was about thirty or forty, easily. Oh, yeah, nice. I I'm guessing there was at, at least thirty or forty. Um, and uh, anyway, um, but th so the girls from Not All Gays were there, and we, there was a few other um, uh, uh, lesbians there. There was one lady that we spoke to, Joe, um, and she won't mind me mentioning her name. Um, she, it was uh, it was just interesting. Just again, uh, she would have been around our age group. And it was just so nice to be sitting there in this space where we did not worry about, you know, uh, we could speak openly. Um, we were warned beforehand just to be a bit careful about just being not too turfy because not all women there are sort of would be openly, you know, they might be a little bit on the fence on this issue, but we didn't have to be. We just we were ourselves and we were yeah. able to talk openly about being lesbians about our experiences about the conference about what we're doing what we're not doing who we're dating who we're not dating whatever the, all the stuff that you normally talk about so it was great it was fantastic uh we left there a little bit on the late side i think it was about 2 a.m in the morning um and so the answer to yeah i mean from just direct experience and um, there is uh, that was openly advertised. That was advertised online, and um, no. Uh, now I know there's um, something happened at Scotland there a couple of days ago where there was some um, judicial um, decision made about um, women, um, as in female real women, <laughs> congregating, and there was some reference to oh, it's limited to twenty four um uh, people or women and um so i'm not i'm i i think scotland is and and wales uh have their own sort of um there's de there's definitely um when it comes to the uk when you ask about the uk you have to i suppose be just uh, conscious that there's different um they yeah. their own parliaments first of all um, uh, um, and England very much. If you talk about Turf Island, which the UK is referenced as, it's it's really more England than yeah. Turf Island. Yeah. Uh, Scotland and Wales are very much going down this really ra rapidly going down this self ID path. So mm -hmm. where England is very much kick back, kicking against it, which is good to see. Um, and uh, so yeah, that was a brilliant experience, and uh, it was it was great. It was it was a, it was a throwback to back in the day. It was great because yeah. you've got you've got these um hate speech laws coming in, haven't you? Like we have in Ireland, or is it it's already in? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Yeah, so it was touted to pass this past summer, but um, it got delayed because there was a, a, a further consultation period was was deemed um, was required simply because the um, the government realised that there was a significant pushback against this the the, the legislation and. Ironically, the individuals and parties in the in our parliament that would be very much um, aligned with the the the, the trans agenda, mm. they've actually have issues with uh, with it. I was at a, a conference, a sports conference, um, an LGBTQ sports conference last week, and one of the um, the panel members there who is a gay man, he uh, represents a party that um, heads up, <laughs> is headed up by a woman who has a brother who's an autogonophile. Um, so you can see where if that party gets to power, where we'll all end up. But anyway, uh, but he actually made a point of saying um, that uh, they had issues uh, with the, the clarity of the legislation. So it, it, there was almost um, on both sides, BGC and the trans activist side, there was a pushback against against the legislation uh, for different reasons now, obviously, because we're saying that it'll it will reduce our um, ability to be able to speak openly, honestly about men 
being Spoke. cannot be women, you know, whereas they are doing it because it's probably um 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 it's it's not I suppose it doesn't have the the, the clarity it doesn't define the word hate um it's 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 poorly written mm. in that regard so and that's like, that's not a bad thing I mean at least they're calling it out that it is poorly worded in that regard but they'll still want the, uh, the ultimate end game for the the uh, the the trans agenda and the parties that support, support the trans agenda is they will want to see this legislation pushed through ultimately um so so that's where it's at it's um again the minister for justice who is not our, our favorite person in in this in, she's a woman who um is is certainly not faithful for the month on our side um she has a, a couple of weeks ago has said that she hopes to get pushed through by christmas um so uh, but I mean, we had there was a conference, a, a huge conference um, about free speech there the same day as Let Women Speak event in Dublin in September. And uh, um, I mean, obviously, there was 800 people at that conference. So there's a lot of people are very aware of the consequences of this um, of this hate, so, so-called hate speech um, uh, legislation. Um, and we do actually have legislation in place, which if properly properly uh, implemented is more than adequate but of course they are doing they're playing this playbook as we all know i mean it's no coincidence that similar legislation uh, is being has been has been or is being passed uh, or contemplated in, in in countries in the western world it's all part of this global playbook in my in my opinion yeah sorry c were you going to say something i can't remember what i was uh. saying <laughs> Sorry, I'm waffling on too much. <laughs> can you can you tell us about the Let Women Speak Dublin event? I saw some yeah. uh, pretty angry men there. Yeah. Um. So I suppose it was um it was it was fantastic turnout. First of all, um, there was about five hundred people, um, and uh, which is a huge number wow. for for um a, a, a Women Speak event. Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, oh, it was just amazing, and um, it was very well policed. I have to say, um, certainly that was very. The organisers managed to get really good um, um, uh, interaction with the, with the the local police, the the guardy, and um, so they 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 created a good safe space between the the um the the speaking event the the people that attended the the event and they obviously the um the trans trans activists who were corralled <laughs> into a, a a space um I'm probably about 100 meters away uh now why they were noisy they were far far enough away um not to impede um our ability to 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 hear the speak the speakers so that was good um and yes you, you've probably seen the footage um it, it was it spread quite far um you know what was sad about it was from a personal viewpoint is that there was a a man there that is the son of a of, of a friend of mine who is a lesbian and unfortunately um he's he's you know joined a, a political party that's full on trans um and uh and she's now aligned with him she actually texted me to say that she would have uh, be there supporting him um if she 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 could for whatever reason she could be there on the day and um and that's really again comes back to where this whole and that's i'm only referencing that from a personal perspective it was just i i i i was sad i was it was great to be there but i was sad because of the people that i i know in in my community that support this stuff um and again that agp that i referenced earlier on he was there um again somebody that i would have set in a you know social group he would have been part of our group and i'm on one side of the barrier and he's on the other side so but the day was fantastic um uh, the speakers were great um in fact there were so many speakers um we we actually 
could not get all the speakers um, that wanted to speak um, because we just ran out of time. Um, so that was great. And that was a, a factor of the, the attendance. There were so many people there. Um, oh. And it was it was great because it... it, it um Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Sue, go on. Yeah, go on. So um, did the people that were attending the Let Women Speak event, did they outnumber the um, trans extremists that were there to protest against women speaking? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, I did ask uh, one of the the, the guardy. I'd asked them, what, "How many do you think is on both sides?" And she uh, said, oh, "I think it's about even." So it would seem as they had about similar numbers as well. But they're very much. You can see that they're rent a crowd. If you could see from their flags, they're very much from the extreme hard left. <laughs> So they basically recruit these mm. attendees, get them on, you know, every event, anything at all that's seen as far right. They're out there. They have the useful idiots, as I call them, um, um, lined up and, and ready to attend these events. I mean, yeah. it's very clear. You could see the flags. It's all very uh, le le um, Marxist, Leninist, uh, communist. Uh, these people before mm. profit are you know extreme left as i would call extreme left um um so there's quite clearly an alignment there that you can see politically where these people where these people uh, line up when it comes to this and um, the anti-fascists anti i say um when the actual yeah. nazis do show up are nowhere to be seen yeah they don't oh, of course they I mean, don't go yeah. over and have a word with the actual nazis this is a pure excuse for them to get out and sh scream and shout at women we saw that in Melbourne too. Yeah. AJ was in Melbourne, yeah. you know. So yeah. yeah, all those different flags and yeah, like you say, Juno, you know, rent a crowd. Yeah, yeah, no, agreed. It is rent a crowd. And what they did was they posted on social media, um, you know, referencing, um, uh, you know, Posey Parker as being a far right bigot. And and unfortunately, people like Alva Smith, who would be a well-known so-called feminist, any woman that's tolerates this, not a feminist in my book, um, she would have, you know, been behind the um, pro-choice, uh, the abortion referendum a couple of years ago, obviously marriage equality. She's a lesbian and calls herself a lesbian, uh, a feminist. And she literally uh, reposted uh, the the tweet or the post for the 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 clarion call, as I call it, for the trans activists. And you're like looking at her, thinking now, people on social media on our side did call her out on it. Um, um, but I mean, you're looking at women like this; they're just these trans maidens that are just tr literally throwing women's lesbians, children under the bus. It's just. It's just unbelievable, but you you don't you see that in every country. I mean, these trans maidens are everywhere, and they're facilitating this. Mm. They're facilitating this nonsense. The the good thing is though, they don't make up the majority of women. The majority of women are um, opposed to it, but yeah, the ones that I, I I just don't understand why they have just sold women and children out like that. They, they have. Well, it might just be because the T was tacked on to the LGB and they just, I think sometimes what we do, because we know so much about this, we're, we're reading about it and we're involved in it and we're protesting, etc. And I think we kind of can expect people to know more than they actually do. Someone like that should know, though, who's yeah. a bit, really, um, you, yeah. it's not yeah. in feminism, um, you can sort of understand they think they're being kind when they're really just being stupid. But some yeah, yeah. Uh, that Juno named, they would have to know. Yeah, yeah, and and look, I mean, the National Council, uh, the National Council of Women in Ireland, um, has a a trans identified male on its board. I mean, um, a an autogynophile, a married man, uh, with three uh, kids. And he's on a women's council. So this is how, I mean, our, a lot of like the, the, the NGOs have uh, in, in Ireland have, um, they, they're hugely funded. Um, so you have the likes of Tenny, which is the Trans Equality Network in Ireland, which is a trans advocacy group, um, gets 
hundreds of thousands of years of of, of government um funding and and indeed gets um, um non government f- funding as well um another group uh, a youth s- support group so called youth support group called belong to same thing is they managed to inveigle themselves in our in our school system i just saw their a post there this morning um on a group chat i'm on um where um a lesbian friend of mine who she posted where she said that um her old school, which be a very working class school, uh, in Dublin, very you know wouldn't really tolerate this pronoun stuff and all this sort of uh, trans nonsense. Um, she said that um that she saw a a a leaflet a flyer um advertising a a belong but this belong to people who are. A trans organization. I mean, they, they call themselves LGBTQ, whatever, but they're absolutely trans and and gender um nonsense um advocates um and yeah they were welcoming um uh they they were go to I think do a lunch um meet up with with the kids in the school and uh you know and be an ally and yeah and let's welcome belong to the to the school and you're like. You know, and she was saying, you know, the the, the kids in this school would be um, very sceptical um, because of the area that they live in. Um, and again, you know, you're, you're you're you just see the 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 why the Alva Smiths and, and, and so on. And these so-called feminists are they're, they're 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 supporting it from what they see as well this is you know government supported this is NGO mm-hmm. supported this is government policy you know I'm only supporting what's 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 in legislation you know and that's their whole you know what well, this is this is I mean, trans trans women are women because I mean mm. we've got it's in legislation now so uh, and again this is why you know the, the, it's almost like they've just and I know it's happened in Australia as well um this has just all happened under the cover of darkness, as far as I'm concerned. You know, pre-2015, we were in normal land. Men were men, women were women. Lesbians were lesbians, and that was it. Uh, and uh, and we're in 2023 now, and it's 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 the upside-down world. Yeah, in, more people um, need to Google autogynophilia, mm, because people yeah. do not realise that when they're saying trans women are women... They're talking about Dave down the road that's been wearing his wife's knickers for the last two years. And then he gets yeah. caught wearing his wife's underwear. And I read this story about this man that did this the other day. He got caught with a pair of knee-high boots. And then he said he came out to his wife and said he's been struggling with his gender for a couple of years. And he had to come out because she found these boots and it's like you have just given these men a complete blank check to be complete absolute perverts and they're the oppressed minority yeah we're misogynists for saying that they're what they are or to find isn't it how these men are now saying to women like us that we're misogynists you just (laughs) yeah well, yeah, it's 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 mad. Yeah, it's absolutely mad. Yeah, if you did, yeah. did you see um, the Helen Joyce thing with that Frida Frida Wallace? Oh, we did it. Oh, we did, we did. I yeah, just we can't did. Believe um, it's real life. So, so what what happened was I had to go into the office at work, and they said, "Why is why did these people want to try to get you disciplined?" Said, well, it's because I'm trans. They don't think I should be working for the ambulance service and expressing myself, and, and they don't believe that I can be a lesbian. But any woman that is intimate with me, it's up to her how she describes herself. So when I fuck men with my female penis in fetish clubs, that is my choice. It doesn't matter what you think. And those men support sex matters because in public they will, but in private they'll fuck me. And that's the truth. <laughs> Well, on that note, I think it might be time to go to Yeah, I mean, the fact that he was allowed to sit with that garb on him, like he should have been told, uh, you know, sorry, you're not dressed appropriately. Uh, but you see, this is where, 
again, you say any these these men have put themselves up on they're on a special pedal pedestal. They are on the trans pedestal of they're on the special um they've elevated themselves to the mm. special place where they cannot be touched. You cannot say anything against them because you're transphobic. Mm -hmm. And that word transphobic doesn't mean anything anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody calls me transphobic, I'll just turn around to them and ask them to find trans. Mm -hmm. And please then, um, and, and then they won't be able to find what trans is because trans is whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And then I'll very simply say, well, how do I have an irrational fear about something that you can't define? It's all about language. It's it's about labels. They label us. It's you know they play the victim all the time. Yep. What and yep. every every issue that comes up that doesn't relate to trans, they always bring it back to trans. So the, the whole world view is it's just about them. And then I saw was it last week where um, there was a claim that the the genocide of the trans is greater than Hiroshima the Holocaust <laughs> and both world wars, they're hard <laughs> any of those people. And you just think, my God, what an insult. <laughs> but then on the other hand, they'll say there's more trans people around now and kids, more kids are coming out as trans because there is more accepted and it's more visible to be trans. It's like, you can't have it both way, guys. Mm. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's obvious from, again, just referencing that LGBTQ youth group. Um, so uh, a lovely lady who I know personally uh, called Annick, um, she stood up at, uh, she's a lesbian, a young lesbian, um, and uh, she stood up at... Um, at the Let Women Speak event in Dublin. And she actually came out. And in fairness, she was there. Um, she came over to me and I was, uh, well, I, I actually went over to her and I, I asked her, I says, would you not, would you, would you stand up? Because she she has been on a couple of broadcasts, but she was anonymous, uh, like I suppose like myself, the way I am now. And um, and she was there and she, she you could see, she says, I really want to speak. I really want to speak. And I said, so I got her hand and I stood right in front of um, Kelly J and uh, I held her hand and I said, look, you have to wave at her. You have to let her know that you want to speak. And um, so I kept waving. So she wouldn't, she wouldn't wave her hand. So um, I was lifting her hand up, trying to wave it for her. But anyway, in the end I waved to Kelly J and uh, so she caught my eye and then she beckoned her and so she went up and she she like her she she came out she came out as a uh, a turf um she spoke brilliantly um she was interviewed on a couple of um i think gripped media uh, interviewed her afterwards um and again the the tear rays came full force after her mm. you know saying that you know she wasn't really you know basically saying that she was transphobic and hateful and and what she was saying wasn't true because what her story is very simple she uh was obviously questioning her sexu sexuality as a teenager and she was introduced to this group belonged to mm. and she was more or less told well you could be trans and um when she was just a lesbian uh and we met the not all gay lesbians as well uh lovely girls so you um with an organization uh called not all gays you're one of the co-founders why why did this group need to be established and what do you mean by not all gays um so we're a group of lesbians gays and bisexuals who um we believe that sexuality is different from gender identity um, it shouldn't be grouped in together we're advocating for same sex attraction and our rights separate to the TQ plus part of the acronym um, they're separate issues and there's there's no one else in this country there's no other group for just right year old lesbians and gays um, and these people try to silence us um, they claim to speak for us, but they don't. It's uh, they they just don't. And they we were holding a sign that said "Stop Violence Against Women and Gays," and they took issue to that, um, which is, in my opinion, quite telling. They they were offended by a sign that said "Stop Violence Against Women." It's a strange take to 
to have an issue with a sign that says that. Very, very, very comfortable with their sexuality, young lesbians. Um, and we've always, myself and my girlfriend will say that we've always referenced the fact that um, we would, we may have fallen into this cult in our youth because it's so pervasive it's it sells you the story you know you can identify out of your gender you can you know you can be uh, opposite sex attracted you know you it, it's yeah. it, that's what they're they're selling they're selling you know um they're they're raising the gays and lesbians um so you know for for, for me uh, it, it is trying to break how do we how do we influence um how do we get the influence that they've managed to garner for themselves and this, these these are the things i think we need to ask in australia ireland the uk the us you know i and posy parker will tell you that she's setting up the party of women she will say we've got to get into local government get, get into the local um uh that they have these PCC, these um, officers that work with with the police force. Um, get do what they play their playbook. Do what they've done. Get into get into government. Get into local government. The government. Um, get into these NGOs. Set up NGOs or own NGOs. Uh, it's easy saying that. Um, mm-hmm. but for me, I think that's the way forward because otherwise we'll just end up like when the actions you guys do is fantastic. I think we need to marry the activism get out the streets get out stickering get out do our campaigns do our events run our events do all of that but in tandem i i think we need to party it now with uh, political activism well when we first met you Mm. we were leafleting the women's fifa world cup in brisbane and you just you just got to australia i think i did I did so. I it was a fantastic uh, experience, um, and yeah. so I um, I, it was even better because um, I, I I had been introduced to my girlfriend Kaylee, and um, we had been texting each other before, um, she had told me about the leafleting event, so I joined you guys, and um, uh, there was one of the ladies there. I won't mention her name, so I know she's um undercover as well, and I was absolutely amazed by how she was just like. She was leafleted. Her leafleting. I've never seen a woman so uh, so impressively um, productive with leafleting. She she nearly knocked people down. She was she was so enthusiastic. <laughs> she was absolutely amazing. So she she was amazing and a beautiful person uh, to to meet, like you you all are. But um, so anyway, Kaylee, um, we met then. At Ireland. I obviously went to the Women's World Cup. That's why I was in Australia. So Ireland were playing Nigeria in some court stadium. So I sent a text to Kaylee and I asked her to come along. So she did. And well, anyway, we got together. And uh, so um, uh, I stayed on for an extra couple of weeks in Australia. I'm self-employed, have my own business. So I'm fairly flexible. And then a month later, Kaylee's come over. So she's here with me now at the moment. And uh, yeah, so the plan is that we will... Like we've done, we've we've done a bit, good bit of turfing together uh, at the moment, and uh, uh, we have planned to do plenty of turfing when we we hopefully be both back in Australia soon, and um, well she lives there so she has to go back, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, she has to come and, back. Uh, sorry. She has to come back. She she's a ninety day visa. <laughs> She'll be thrown out of the country. You can't have that. So um yeah, and we hope then to meet up with you guys then and uh and do lots of um activism. Like Kaylee's the she's the banner drop queen. She's that's her thing. She she's she's really good at that. And uh yeah, so look, we'll we'll uh, we we're looking forward to um joining up with you guys and uh, and and doing more activism over there. So Juno, can I just ask when you were you were in Australia for how long? What how long were you here for? Was it a couple of months or a month? Yeah, it was it was six weeks. And what did you think of um, you know, the turfing in Australia? I think your activism is 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 really good at some point. Um, you know, I, I love the whole um campaigning you did around the, the Women's World Cup. That was really good. Um yeah, look, um I think I think you're in the same. You seem to be somewhat similar to where we're at in Ireland. You have this legislation's been brought in. People are sort of largely unaware of it. 
are beginning to become aware of it. Um, I thought the uh the can the, the voice uh, referendum result was quite interesting. Looking from outside, thought that was an interesting result. Um, and um, so when people are you know put when something is presented as a fait accompli, maybe sometimes it's not the fait accompli if people do critically look at things and they're informed. So I would say that uh, I think on the ground, uh, you guys, I suppose, really, I suppose it's a numbers game. Uh, I know here in Ireland, uh, it's about recruiting people, getting people involved. Uh, uh, but you need, you, need, you need boots on the ground. You need people to organise, spread the word, campaign, um, so yeah, I mean, you've impressive um, core group there. Um, so it's just try and build on the numbers. That's all I would say to you. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough gig, isn't it? Is it? Tough. it is tough. It is tough. People are time deprived. We're all busy. Uh, we have work. We have families, whatever. And you know, so it's hard. You know, you're there. Um, you're trying to get people. They're volunteering own yeah. time um and it's it mostly is mostly volunteer it is volunteers or retired people or mums uh not really people that have got a huge amount of money behind them like mm. the other side have yeah. yeah 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 and i think that's the that's the and maybe we'll discuss it when we when we're when we're back in australia i think for me the discussions i mean i've had these discussions here in ireland um uh where you know we'll actually I'll be attending a free speech event in 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 our lo local area here next week, and I mean the conversations we start co these conversations about fundraising. We need money. We need money. We have to arm. We have to fund this. And so that's a, another challenge, I suppose, because the other side are they have they have so much money, uh, that they sometimes they don't even know what to do with it. It's, mm. it's just insane governments behind them they've got industry behind them they've got everything yes. Um, yes. Yeah. so you know where it's such a disadvantage but the one thing throughout history is women fought to get where they were men haven't had to do what women had to do so yeah. well we've enough. got the truth yeah we've, we've literally got the yes. truth on our side yeah so and it, yeah it's public isn't it so so they're aware but you know yeah, and, yeah. You know, there's kids that are fighting back. There were 50 children in New South Wales that took down the pride flags at the school and burnt them in the school ground. So they all got suspended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, that's. I assume that's that progress flag, is it? Mm. Yeah. Well, it said pride, yeah. but it was progress flag, I would say. But, yes, yeah, so yeah. kids to get together in a school and make this decision that they're going to tear down the flags and burn them, those kids were pissed off. And so they would have yeah. not, there would have been a consequence to that. So they all got suspended, 50 of them. Yeah, you know, look, one of the, part of me would say the burning of the flag, again, that's probably a little bit extreme. I can understand the sentiment. I I hate that flag myself as a lesbian. I think it's a horrible flag. It's, it's a completely, flag. It's, it's, it's just, a, it doesn't represent us gays and lesbians anymore. I it was a joke um, when I first saw it. I thought it was a, like, I a parody. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so did I. And um, so I hate that. I actually get a visceral feeling of just oh, utter discomfort when I see it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we need to get as gays and lesbians. That's the other challenge. Gays and lesbians need to rediscover our our um. We need to find our new organisations, and that's why uh, LGBT Alliance, not all gays here in Ireland. Um, I know that's something myself and Katie are really want to start working on is our own lesbian orientated groups where we provide safe spaces for lesbians and we can have those type of events that we saw and attended in London last week where we can provide safe spaces but again the legislation uh, background and backdrop to this is we're not sure if we can do that and that perhaps needs to be challenged but again that needs money and time so for us to, to, to do what LAG did in um mm -hmm. in Melbourne, which is fantastic, and challenge, and they knew they weren't going to win, but that's not the point. They wanted to raise awareness about it, and now they have. I think uh, it's something that we should look at maybe doing here in Ireland. Uh, I think it would be great. It would, at least it would bring attention to the greater public. Hang on a second, lesbians can't actually um uh for, you know they, we can't meet uh in our own groups here. 
there has to be men involved. Well, um, see, so you know, it's illegal yeah. lesbians together publicly. Yeah, not just that you yeah. can't; it's illegal. And the yeah. Australian Rights Commission has said that it's just illegal. So, telling women if they want to gather, like you know, do it privately, yeah. going around. So, mm. it's it beggars belief that it's come to this stage where there's no freedom of association. And the, and the thing is also the hostility by these men that call themselves lesbians. <laughs> now you put them in a room. Oh, they're but, unreal. And they, as a lesbian, I can tell you, when you are uh, at an event with them, they, they, the energy in the room changes immediately when they come into the room. They, you're immediately, I, it's only when I look back on it now, I realise that I was always very self-conscious, especially if we were out in public, if we were at a dinner event, if they, you know, we used to have these dinner meetups. And the, the, if there was any of those walked into the room, you were immediately looking around to see what people thought or where people were looking. Uh, because, you know, they stand out a mile. You know that they're men. And um um yeah, so you're right. It's it's uh it's just this. It's all this self entitlement. Um, this I said they're they're they put themselves up on this pedestal. They're un, they've created this untouchable space around them, and we have to start working to to break it down. And that comes back to the activism married with political um activity. I think that's just for me personally. I think that's the way we have to go. Hey, Juno, um, at the LGB Alliance Conference, was there any protesting by trans activists? Oh, yes, there was. Uh, and there was at the LWS uh, event in um, on, on in Hyde Park on Sunday as well, which we also attended. The lovely Moira Deeming um, uh, was there with her, um, what's that lady that um, accompanied her um, to the UK? Right. Her name? Rachel Wong. Rachel, yeah, yeah, Rachel Wong, yeah. Uh, it was really funny. I'm going to go sidetrack, side it, it, but the it spot the Australians. I mean, they were there <laughs> carrying together. Literally, it was raining and it was quite cold, <laughs> and it was like they were just literally hanging out of each other to keep each other warm. But anyway, that's <laughs> not um, It was funny. It was just myself and Katie were laughing. We're like, oh my god, to spot the two Australians. But anyway, um, because they didn't come with uh, with adequate clothing. Let's put it that way. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, there was uh, so this uh person. Uh, this uh, Fred Wallace character who seems to be just be trolling um, gays and lesbians um, at, at, and, and women at this point. He turned up um, and he put a sticker up to say, uh, trans woman here, please speak to me. Uh, of course, nobody spoke to him because <laughs> he, he, he's a freak. Um, and uh, so there was a gathering. There was so picture it. There's 500, circa 500 people at the at the conference. I think there was maybe at one stage three of them and including Fred Um, a, a couple joined later on. It was just pitiful. And I mean, they put up posters saying LGB Alliance or LGBA. Uh, yeah, LGBA is um is a hate group. <laughs> so mm. gays and lesbians getting together in our own spaces is a, is hateful apparently um so i mean we just we just all laughed at that um and uh yeah and they he turned up again at the lws event on in high park on fine. sunday and he he's but the police had to tell him he started um replaying uh the hateful comments um this person called sarah jane parker Barker or Parker, whatever. <laughs> Barker, I think. Anyway, a man who laughs as a woman. Sarah um, Jane Baker. He, Baker, Baker, that's the one. So do you remember he shouted at some Pride event uh, back in the summer about kill or turf should be killed or whatever hateful comment he made? Really fluffy and be really nice and say, yeah, be really lovely and queer and gay. No, if you see a turf, punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> So Fred started playing this on his phone. Where's your ass? And anyway, the the um the stewards notified the the police, and the police went over to him and said, uh, "You have to leave." <laughs> 
<laughs> so he he just walked off in a huff. But anyway, um, but it's like the, again, there was only a couple of a couple of them at the event, and I think again, it, it it's for me it, the um they they get now they did turn up in really big numbers at the Dublin event, but they there, there was nothing they could really do because it was a very well pleased event. They couldn't bully us. They couldn't do what unfortunately has happened in uh, in Australia and all what the awful thing that happened to Posey in in New Zealand. You know, when there's really strong numbers there, you yeah. really, really take away the wind out of their sails when it comes to them trying to bully uh women. And especially when there's men and women together, forget it. They, they you you completely um uh, take away their power, so to speak. Um, it's only when they target women in small when that they perceive them as small groups, mm. where they perceive they've greater numbers. Then that's when they start their bullying tactics. And I've been at a number of LWS events to see that for myself. Yeah, they're abusers. They they act as abusers do. Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. vile. Yeah, they do. They do. And if you look at them, they're predominantly young men. There is a few trans maidens, as I call them, um, mm-hmm. um, and uh, probably, probably heterosexual women, quite frankly, who just, you know, um, are supporting their LGBTQ and whatever um, people. And um, so it's it, yeah. And I think, you know, without conflating other other things are going on at the moment in the world but we and I won't mention it but we all know the other issue big issue that's happening in the world at the moment and you could see that this this middle class university educated uh, cohort of young people who are just falling into these mantras and doctrines you know um and I, I literally have lost their ability to critically think about anything mm. um and you know it, it's no coincidence that that uh, uh, this trans stuff permeates sort of the more middle class mm. sphere of 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 society um uh, that's anecdotally what i have seen you know you don't really see very many what I would call typical working class um, Dublin people, for example, with their strong Dublin accents going around with the he, she pronouns. It's just mm. not a thing. It's just not, they, they, they would be laughed out of court if they started that sort of stuff. Mm. Hey, you were with us when we got accosted by the Greens, remember? Turns out, welcome here! Turns out, welcome here! Turns out, welcome here! Turns out, welcome here! I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> I remember. I remember that screeching female. I have to say, I mean, she threw water at one of the girls, and uh, that could have been anything. Yeah. And uh, like, um, I, I, I remember being a little bit afraid at that event. I told Kaylee about it afterwards. I said, "Oh, she said, oh, I would have protected you," but that's not the point. I was still afraid. Um, it, you know, it was they, they. The hate in these people. That woman, she do you remember we crossed the road and she came after us and she just started screaming at the top of her head like she was demented. They're not normal. Um, Scream, didn't she? At the top of her voice for about 30 seconds. Like, you know. Yes, yes. I, I remember standing there just thinking. 
why are the police doing something? This woman is having, is she having a fit or what's wrong with her? Um, I mean, it was just insane behavior. I mean, I've seen footage like that in, 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 at events in the US, similar, you know, um, where women literally, and it's always women that do that, and uh, that scream at the top of their voice and mm. hold that scream for a prolonged period of time. It's, 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 it's right just more. something. And don't yeah. they, they look like they're, they're from a cult and that they're completely brainwashed <laughs> and, and yeah. the look that they have in their eyes. And yeah. I, imagine if everyone just screamed like that when they couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's a uh, well you see again you know it all comes back as, as you as you said yourself we're the ones that speak in you know with facts figures data all they have is mantras oh trans women are women trans rights uh you are human rights you, you know it's all these mantras they have no and that's why it is that's why they stonewall in the uk for several years um propagated no debate uh, because yeah. there is no debate here they know that um and that we saw with the helen joyce fred <laughs> debacle um i mean helen joyce is an extremely intelligent bright woman yeah and fred was just seen to be the alcoholic lout that he is yeah for helen joyce to have to yeah. waste her time sitting next to a man yes. in fishnets with his bollocks hanging out he was ambushed yeah. they didn't tell her that he'd be there yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. She thought. Yeah. She thought it was only Peter, uh, uh Thatchell that was going to be there, mm-hmm. and uh, but he's another. I mean, I don't get me talking about him. He's no. definitely got issues when it comes to pedophilia and his background. I mean, uh, but but at least he's some sort of seen as a, an old school gay rights campaigner, um, and uh, but yeah, I mean, he he apparently insisted that um there had to be a trans person there, and of course he just rolled in um. Uh, Fred Wallace and Fred Wallace then had this big spat with India Willoughby who's that other deluded um, Tim uh, who's we all um, have varying degrees of uh, I, I mean I've never interacted with India Willoughby and he's blocked me on Twitter and I'm like well I've never even blocked me. interacted with you the yeah he's just Raymond, he yeah just... he's yeah, as soon as he, he's obviously clearly looking every single like and every single post, and then he's going in. Yep, I'm blocking you. So I mean, this is how sad that pathetic that man is. But is I mean, it- but even he had a spat with Fred because Fred obviously quite clearly came across as being uh, yeah. a drunk and a fetishist, <laughs> and obviously uh, wasn't painting quite the proper trans narrative. Uh, mm-hmm. But of course, so I mean, you know, again, it all comes back to this whole. Uh, the AGP narrative, how these men have managed to persuade people in in government that they are women. I'm a real woman, Amanda. I want you to know that. Yes, a darling. real woman. Okay, I'm yes. glad that's sinking in. I'm going to say it one more time so it really penetrates. Yes. I am a real woman. Okay. I I'll, I just to this day I I just don't understand it. I've seen lesbians again on the gay scene in Dublin who will hang around one of those AGPs on the gay scene, they'll hang around him and uh, uh, he organises meetups and you're sitting there looking at them from a distance. How could you even just, you know, just sit there with them and they'll come up and give him, you know, when they're leaving the, the bar, you know, when they're given, saying goodnight, go up and k- kiss him on the lips and... Oh, it's just all this just hand hand trans maiden behavior, and it just makes my skin crawl, you know. Yeah, it gets some self respect, women, if you're doing that. Do you reckon they'll wake up to themselves, these women? Well, I mean, my friend, who quite frankly, I think our relationship is finished. Um, is you know, and I would consider her a good friend because her son has joined this extreme left party who's all into trans stuff um i mean she's has she's supporting him um and you know she's become a, a trans maiden overnight and she would have been very much on the fence and i mean i did discuss this with her last year and she was very much you know was nodding back at me and acknowledged what i was saying and and agreed with me um but now because her son 
and she wants to support her son um and she doesn't have daughters this woman has two sons um so she doesn't have daughters and I suspect that again that's part of the problem as well I think some of these women if they had young females in their lives uh, maybe they might have a different yeah. perspective I have a young niece who is uh, mad into sport just the way I was when I was young and I you know I've I want to make sure that she's protected from this, that she she when she plays sport, um, you know, unfortunately there's a man that plays in Gaelic football here in Ireland and he's allowed to play Gaelic football, women's Gaelic football. And, you know, I don't want a you know, a sport where she is in the dressing room with one of these mm. men when she when she grows up. Um so for me that's one of the main reasons I'm in this fight is because to protect young young girls and young women like like her. I was watching um the podcast uh, Gender a Wider Lens and they had this female coach. She's an elite athlete. She's been around, but she's a coach of women's team. Right. Like she was in athletics and she was saying that um so it was some athletics that, that was introduced into the Olympics in 1920s and that mm. men, even back then were trying to get into women's sports. Mm. That goes yeah. back years. So, yeah, men, men have been trying to get into women's changing rooms yeah. as long as change, women's changing rooms have existed. Yeah, and it just really, I just couldn't believe it, that they were even trying that 100 years ago, just saying that they were women so they could compete yeah. with them. wow yeah yeah it doesn't surprise me it doesn't yeah. surprise me i mean just talking about sports sports is very close to my heart i'm a, an ex elite uh, gaelic football player I would have played for the dublin football team back in the day and um gaelic football team that is and uh for me and i was involved in my local club there last year just helping out um and I remember um, to, before I got really busy at work, so I had to suspend that activity for a while. But anyway, long story short, I mean, I before I, I could join uh, the local committee, I had to do um, a, a safeguarding um, course. I had to uh, be um, police vetted. Uh, so they have a lot of routines that had to be because I'm I'm working. I'm in close proximity to children because there's a lot of underage teams in the in the local GA club here and I'm just thinking you know what if like a man just walked up here and said I want to play with the ladies for Gaelic football team now that won't happen because they know that um uh they know that there would be pushback against that. So it is. It is. In, it's interesting that there's only one trans-identified male that we know of, anyway, that's playing ladies' Gaelic football or women's Gaelic football here in Ireland. Um, so, um, because again, how can you have an organisation? Even though the organisation has, to disgracefully, uh, uh, sorry, the LGFA is the Ladies' Gaelic Football Association. And they last this year, earlier this year, brought out a transgender policy where they said that basically any males that have gone through um, a, a male puberty, once they have suppressed testosterone levels, can play ladies Gaelic football. OK, insane stuff. Absolutely insane stuff. Mm -hmm. Um but we haven't seen, and we're all in a holding pattern here at the moment, I suspect, uh, with Gaelic football in, in Ireland. We're all waiting. And even though I, I saw there were several, there was a lot of pushback against it, um, the LGFA just pushed it down on it. And to the degree that elite football players, uh, the football players that would be well very well-known football players, so when they did... Um, one of their big league competitions they were being interviewed um just as part of the you know uh, the press uh, um for, for like the, it was like a launching the, the the league and uh they were um told um not to answer any questions if the trans question was asked they were actually told briefed do not answer any questions all that so you can see um that um the uh, the amount of just where these organizations when they are captured the amount of how they just uh, inculcate a, a a a sense of fear 
uh, I would say. But I would also say that we have largely still a conservative rural community in, in Ireland and who I suspect quite strongly don't will not tolerate this. So we're in a holding pattern at the moment when it comes to this. We're waiting to see that big moment when a, a transidentified male tries to join a club, a, late, a women's football team. We, we, we're waiting for that to happen. So I'll keep you posted on that. But yeah, I mean, unfortunately, because again, we've self-ID in this country, you know, that's created a huge issue. For, for sporting organisations um, in, in this country. And the main sports body, which is Sports Ireland, are, I know have gone through a consultation process on this to, uh, to literally get guidance on their transgender policy. So they that will be a guidance document that they will then just give to all sporting organisations in Ireland. They have intimated that it will be uh, a guidance document. It won't be, a, it won't be mandated. So therefore, and again, you know, so they're again what they haven't come out with it, and that's the problem. There, we were waiting for this policy document to be issued last month. Still hasn't been issued. So they're obviously, and I know they went through a consultation process. I know that for a fact. And I suspect what's happened there is that they didn't particularly like the results of the consultation process mm. and are probably just sitting on them at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so look, that's, uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that because again, the sports narrative is worldwide. It's global at this stage because, and especially it's, it's very uh, pertinent to countries where self ID has been introduced because these men absolutely feel that they've got divine right to play in women's sport because hey, I'm a woman. Did you hear a couple of weeks ago in the United States there was a swim meet for um, young children, 12, 13, 14, and uh, there was a race and it was 13 and it was 13 and above, it was a girls' race. And a 50-year-old man competed against nine girls aged 13 and 14. He yes. is a star in yeah. the United States, a 50-year-old man. Saw that. Yep. Yeah, saw that. And that's what you're opening yourself to. I mean, this this man that's currently playing uh, now it's a the, the 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 team that he's playing for is an lgbtq plus blah blah uh, uh football club now gaelic football uh as in gaelic games in general in ireland is based on what's called the concept of the parish so our our community the local community so the local community creates a club and that club then represents the local community and then that feeds into our we have counties we've 32 counties in the island of ireland and all 32 counties then compete against each other at elite level so that's the structure right so it's very much from a grassroots community-based type of organization and it's more importantly it's an amateur organization so it's not it's not paid profession played uh, professionally but here's the thing this transidentified male then is plays with this lgbtq plus club which finds it hard to find a pitch because it's not aligned to a community because hello you know there's no such parish or town or village called lgbtq plus yes. so even even they've been afforded this sort of um ability to be able to form a club which is outside of the general parameters for for forming a club, which is grassroots, community-based. Um, so he's joined that because he's given full protection because, again, all of his trans maiden uh, um, teammates allow him to play there. And um, and so he's, you know, uh, I've heard, I, I, again, I, I met a lady who played on a team that played against him there a couple of months ago, and they've put him in goals uh, because he's useless. He's absolutely useless. He can't play the game. He's he's Italian. He came over to Ireland about two years ago or a number of years ago, and, and he's never grown up playing the sport. So how could he, you know, you, you can't develop skills playing a sport in your mid-30s or his late 30s as he is. But here's the thing. Most of the players on that team would probably be in their early 20s. So again, you have that age differential between the two. Um, um, and again, this whole 
again, just this ability to be able to overlook basic safeguarding. And I know for a fact, again, just to finish off on this topic, because it is relevant um, to the whole safeguarding issue. Um, I know that uh, there was a game that they were due to play uh, against a team that predominantly would have had mostly 16, 17, 18 year olds. And the team uh, forfeited the game. Now, the reason, the official reason that they gave was that a number of their players were doing exams and obviously they're schoolgirls, so they were going to do exams. But we've heard on the grapevine it was because uh, they could not in any conscience uh, have such young girls playing against a team that had a man on it or male or a, 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 a trans identified male that it was a safety issue so that's why they forfeited the game now i that's not, that's what i've heard on the grapevine um um so look you can see that's the landscape um and that's again that's the team being forced depriving their girls potentially yeah. of playing the game yeah. why because there's men playing in women's sport. Yeah, mm. it's always the girls and the women that lose out. Yeah. Correct. Always. Anyway, yeah. thank you for coming on to talk to us. Yeah. Great. It was great. Great wait chatting to have you, you, you. Have you back in Australia turfing with us? Yes. Very soon. Yes. Really looking forward to it. Uh, really enjoyed my time. I well, I had a fantastic time down there. The World Cup was on a positive note and why don't we end it on a positive note I have to say the Women's World Cup was absolutely fantastic I thought yeah. Australia <clears throat> excuse me um, did yourselves proud I thought the attendance at the games in Australia were amazing yeah. um, I thought the support was amazing I thought the uh, the just even uh, just going to the pubs, the support. Uh, was, we watched a number of the games in in the the a, a bar and surfers, uh, which is quite an ex ex experience in itself. Mm. Um, that's on the Gold Coast, and um, it was just amazing seeing people out in their Australian jerseys, young kids at the games. Um, fantastic. It was it was amazing experience, and well done, Australia. You you did yourselves proud. You really did. So I just wanted to end on that positive note male to um you know join the Matildas and start playing. Oh, I think that would really absolutely the whole of Australia absolutely. if a male then you know was selected for the team. I think yeah. It no, would, it was a great yeah. atmosphere. It was an awesome carnival atmosphere. It was really, really good. Thanks yeah. for for bringing that up because it's nice to end on a positive. It is. Yeah. Okay, girls. Well, look, I look forward to seeing you soon, please, God. And uh, it's great chatting to you. And thanks very much for the opportunity to talk. Thank you very much. Don't forget, next week is AGP Fetish Week. Sorry, I mean, um, Transgender Awareness Week. So make sure you celebrate. <laughs> we will. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.